Now, let's talk about, well, it's more of demonstrating DDoS attack. Take note of this. DDoS is very dangerous. And I'm just testing DDoS attack in our testing environment, our hack site, not against a working production public website or a production public web application. Also, DDoS has a lot of tweaks and tuning, and it's not covered in this video. I'm here now in our EC2 instance page, and what I'm gonna do is I will open new tabs and uh, I will access our two instances. So this is our first instance, Stix Blog 1, and uh, the second tab would be the second instance. I'm gonna copy paste this public IP address and I'm gonna specify the TCP port 8000. So I'm accessing now the two instances. Next this, I'm gonna open a new tab for the load balancer, 6ELB, and I will copy and paste this DNS and I will open our web application via our application load balancer 6ELB. Then I will open also our target group, uh, dedicated page, so 6TG, and two of our targets, which is 6Blog1 and 6Blog2, listening on port 8000, are healthy. Now, let's test our DDoS. So what I have here is our Kali Linux and we have few terminals. The first one here is on the left is for Stix Block 1. The second one here for our second instance, Stix Block 2. And the one below here is for our web application via Stix ELB. So what I'm gonna do is I will use low loris. The command is low HTTP test. I specified the IP address or the public IP address of our second instance. And we're gonna talk about uh, how we came up with these parameters, these values. So I'm gonna hit enter now. As you can see, it's just in shading, okay? The service is still available. And now we have few thousand spending connections. Some are already connected. Now the service is not available, no longer available. So if I go, to our second EL, excuse me, the second e, uh, EC2, our second instance. As you can see, it's no longer responsive. Okay, so it's no longer responsive, and um, in few seconds, we will see the connection is timing out. Now, if I go to our target group, okay, so. What I will do is I will refresh this in few seconds and um, it may not mark unhealthy, one unhealthy EC2. Uh, why? Because under health checks, we've already talked about this in another video or in a, our previous video, it consumes 30 seconds interval and for unthresh unhealthy threshold, it will have a two consecutive health checks failures plus a five second timeout. So if we refresh let's see if it will mark the second instance as unhealthy i'm gonna click this tick box again and uh, let's see the details now as you can see our Stix block two, which is our second uh, EC2, is now marked unhealthy. It says the status ch health checked failed. Now, what I will do is I'll go back to our Kali Linux and let's do the DDoS on the first ELB, excuse me, the first EC2. Okay, service available. And uh, let's wait for a few more seconds. It's now sending um, thousands of connections. All right, now the service is no longer available and uh, let's verify. So this is our first EC2. And as you can see, it's no longer responsive. Okay, so in few more seconds, we should see that this two sticks block uh, Six block targets should no longer be available and should mark health status as unhealthy. All right, so let's refresh. I'm gonna select six TG, then the target tab. Okay. 
Now, as you can see, one healthy and one unhealthy. If I click target, now the sticks block two. Fortunately, fortunately, it already recovered, but the sticks block one is still unhealthy. All right. So what I'm gonna do is, I will go to our web application via six ELB, and if I hit refresh, this should be good. Okay. The reason why is still okay because this second sticks block two, our second instance is now healthy. It's now responsive and accepting connections. As you can see, having an accessible EC2 public IP address is quite insecure. We should only be able to access our EC2 web application via AWS ELB. In our case, sticks ELB. We're going to talk about how to secure this public IP addresses in the next videos. Now, I'm gonna hit refresh and hopefully both targets are already um, recovered, but unfortunately no. So what happened was really, it went down, okay? It went down, service were no longer available. But at the same time, the slow Loris exceeded. It terminated the actual DDoS attack. So after terminating, uh, the web application will start recovering. So that's what happened. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to run DDoS against our web application via Sticks ELB. So this is our URL and look at the destination port, okay? It's no longer TCP port 8000, like what we did when uh, running DDoS directly against our EC2. So I'm gonna hit enter, okay? And as you can see, still pending. It's now starting to send thousands of traffic. Okay, it's now connected to a little less than 1,000. Service is unavailable now. Let's run again, okay? In our second tab, there. Now let's go back to our web application via Stix ELB. If I hit refresh, hmm, look at that. This web application seems unresponsive. Okay, it's unresponsive. See that? Now let's look at our traffic group. Oh, our traffic group, both six block one and two, both our EC2 instances are now healthy. Okay, still unresponsive. Now this is via AWS ELB with web application firewall. And uh, we have already enabled WAF. Okay, based on our previous video. And by enabling WAF, it should automatically activate our AWS Shield standard, which is the basic AWS DDoS protection feature of AWS. Um, so is it working? Let's refresh again. Okay, so now it seems it's responsive. So let me close again the tab and reopen. Okay, so as you can see, we can access our web application and it's responsive unlike few seconds ago. Now, we also saw our traffic group, this traffic group with two targets are not affected because the listener, our Stix ELB, is receiving request connections via TCP port 80. Um, here in our targets, we are using not TCP port 80, but TCP 8000s. And what happened was there was moments where our Stix ELB, our web application wasn't responsive and DDoS was a little successful. Now, can we access the web application? Yes, we can now access our web application. Now let's check our Kali Linux. So let's go to our Kali Linux. This is our slow Loris. The status is cannot establish connection. And as you can see, the test ended on the third second. Um, compared to the other test, 200 plus seconds. So, so it seems that slow Loris kind of worked, but our AWS Shield standard was able to prevent the DDoS attack. Now, is there a better option? Because there was still a downtime, right? So let's check. So let's go back to our AWS page. And uh, what I'm gonna do is 
I will go to our web application firewall. Let's go to the load balancer and uh, under integration, I'm going to click this arrow and I'm going to click view web ACL AWS WAF. All right. So like what I mentioned, when enabling AWS WAF, it automatically enables AWS Shield. Take note of this AWS Shield standard. If I click getting started, you we have already enabled or automatically enabled AWS Shield standard, which is the basic DDoS protection, but it's not enough. AWS can do better than this. But what you need to do is you need to activate AWS Shield Advance. But how much will it cost? Yeah, minimum 3000 US dollars monthly. So what do you think guys? Should I explain how we adjust and fine tune DDoS settings? This involves some mathematical formulas. Let's do it. Yeah.